Hi, we're going to do a all rules derivation that is uh, a little bit more challenging. Uh, it's not really that much harder, it's basically just longer. Um, there's going to be sort of lots of components to this, but let's sort of just see if we can identify the flow and where we're going to need to go. So this is the show line here, uh, b bracket x, x, arrow, it's not the case that there exists a z, m, x, z, close bracket, close bracket. Okay, well, I'm just going to AID this immediately. Uh, I have all my rules, so of course I'm going to do this. Um, B, X, X, arrow, it's not the case that there exists a Z, uh, M, X, Z. So this is some massive universal that will turn into a conditional. It's sort of just like another premise, so I'm just not even going to worry about it. It doesn't actually give me anything to go on right now. Now let's actually look at the flow of this derivation. Premise 1 is a massive universal, so I'm just going to have to sit on it and wait until I know what to match. That's either from A, a predicate or B predicate. Premise 2 is a universal existential universal. So this actually looks like it might be a buried existential, so we'll see about that. Um, this one, premise 3, starts with an existential, then goes to universal. Because it starts with an existential, we are automatically going to do that first. Premise 4 uh, is a conditional. Um, and then so we can either try and build the antecedent or build the um, negation of the consequent. I can basically go on either way here, it doesn't really matter, and uh, yeah, so why don't we just start with the EI. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, I, I don't think it matters. Well, I changed my mind. Let's actually start with the universal derivation. Uh, if I can actually show this antecedent then I'm going to get uh, this real nice. Uh, we'll see. There's basically two directions to do this proof. So I'm going to actually show for all x, for all y, uh, bracket a, x, y, arrow, not, m, y, x. Now, I know I could do an assume ID here because I have m all my rules like quantifier negation, but I actually find um, universal derivation very easy, so I'm just going to do a UD here. For all y, bracket a, x, y, arrow, not, m, y, x, uh, and then I'm going to do another UD. So the, the reason why I actually wanted to do it this way was to show you what a double UD looks like. Um, I think I've done this before. It's very straightforward. There's nothing to it. I've now just unpacked a conditional, so I know I can have a, x, y, and on line 7, I can show uh, not m, y, x. And on line 8, I can assume id to m, y, x. And that's assume id, that's assume cd. OK, that's a lot of show lines and breakdown, but I know I'm going after this. Well, so now I've actually basically just sort of pinned down some a's and some m's. So I know I can do some sort of process of matching. Uh, here, my a. My a is pinned to x, y, and over here, for all z, can change my z predicate, sorry, my a predicate second slot. So my second slot fixed over here is y, so I immediately know that I can get this. Um, there exists a w, a, w, y, arrow, b, y, y, because I changed all the z's to y in order to match, and that's premise 1, ui. Well, I can actually easily generalize the, uh, generate the antecedent of line 9 by existentially generalizing line 6, which I will do now. Um, that's an easy generalization, w, y, and that's line 6, e, g. And immediately I mode as ponens and I get b, y, y. Okay, why is that good? Well, line 2 is where I also have a b predicate. The, the game here is just looking around and figuring out what to match. Here I have BYY where it's fixed in first and second slot. Here I have another B predicate, but I can change them to anything. Obviously I'm going to change to match, and I get BYY arrow. It's not the case that there is a Z, M, Y, Z. And that's line 2, UI. On line 13, I will complete that U, uh, modus ponens, and I get this. I'm missing brackets here, sorry. And that is line 11, 12, modus ponens. Now, I obviously know these are going to contradict. 
I could actually quantify or negate this and then UI, but the easier, more direct way is to just generalize this. I'm going to change this EX to a Z, and I generalize and I get there exists a Z, M, Y, Z, and that is line 8, EG, and this obviously is a direct contradiction with line 13, ID, uh, which shows that. Now, unfortunately, yes, I do have to close all these show lines one at a time. So now that I've shown the consequent, I can actually sh uh, close this by saying 7CD. And then now that I've shown that on line 16, I can say, oh, this was the instantiation. So now I can go back and do universal derivation, 5UD. And on line 17, I'll do one more UD. And that's from line 4 to 3. So that's 4UD. OK, all of this was actually just to get the antecedent of this premise. And so now, after all that, I can actually modus ponens. With line 3 and premise 4, I can modus ponens to get there's not the case that there exists a y, not g, y, y. And that's uh, premise 4, line 3, modus ponens. Uh, quantifier negation is always available. I'm just going to do it. Uh, and there you go, 18QN. Now, uh, I still haven't done this, so I'd probably be wise to do it right now. Uh, I'm, I basically decided to go after premise 4, and that involved uh, premise 1 and my assume ID. And now you can see that uh, the leftover parts I'm going to use are premise 2 and premise 3, and that's going to work together to generate something about G, and I'll have a nice, clean, easy contradiction generated. So, all I have to do here is EI. So I EI and I get H bracket I Y Y. I believe that's the first EI I've done, so I is free. Uh, arrow for all Z, it's not the case, G I Z. And that's premise 3 EI. Well, that's nice because, whoops, now on, la on this, I realize that even though this is a buried existential, I do have guidance for what to do my universal x to. This is h, slot 1 can change to anything, but over here, h, slot 1 is fixed at i. So I'm just going to match. ui to match whenever possible. And I get h, i, y, z. That is premise 2, uh, ui. So now I've unburied this existential, and I immediately EI it, and I get IJZ, and that's 21 EI. And on line 23, I now can match this one, because here I can change the second slot, which also changes the third, but that's no big deal, to anything. But notice here in my H predicate, my second slot is fixed to J, so I'm going to UI to J and I get H, I, J, J, arrow for all Z, not G, I, Z. And that is line 20, U, I. Okay, now I can obviously match up with 22 to get the H, I, J, J, because this Z can change to anything, and I get H, I, J, J. That's 22, U, I. The point of all this is to match these perfectly so I can modus ponens and I get for all z not g i z. Uh, 23, 24, u, nope. Modus ponens. Now, here we go. I have line 19 and I have line 25 and I just need to make a contradiction. Well, it's pretty straightforward. I just need them to match. Of these two predicates, this is G, Y, Y, where both can be changed to anything. This is G, I, Z, where only the second can be changed, which means this I over here is fixed, so I always match to what is fixed. So I'm going to U, I, this Y into I, which will also change the second slot, but that's not that big of a deal. So then I get not, not, G, I, I from line 19, U, I. And on 27, now I match this second slot, and I get not G, I, I from line 25, U, I. And of course, that contradicts with line 26, ID. Box, oops, close. Okay, that's it. 
This derivation is actually not that difficult, but I hope you see how I sort of attacked it. Um, you can solve this in a variety of ways. You don't actually have to build this uh, antecedent right here. Uh, you could actually have started with the H's and moved to the G's, and then the G's would have modus ponens out, and then you would have actually gone backwards towards your B's. Uh, there's lots of different ways to solve this, so you should try some. Also, in building the antecedent here, I chose to do a universal derivation. If you don't want to do that, you could actually just use quantifier negation to get around any sort of problems. Why this might be a problem is because um, here I knew to do, do my universal derivation right off the bat. And that actually was quite nice because X and Y never appeared free previously to me doing UD, so it was safe for me to do universal de de uh, derivation. If I had actually done some work ahead of doing this, then I would have actually cheated on my UD, and I would have needed to use alphabetic variance to get out of it, or I could just use quantifier negation and it would work just fine. So try this in a variety of different ways if you want. This is a really good test question. It's it's a reasonably challenging problem, um, but you can see that everything in the end ended up just being EI first, UI to match. There's really no tricks beyond that. Okay, good luck.